Not working. Oh, it's fixing to be working. It's fixing to be live. Okay, let's all go around because we're going live. Yes, we are. We're actually going live. We're going to do about 30 minutes of live broadcast. It's going just Bob. But y'all are important because I'm speaking to you if you're laughing or pointing or talking. So uh, here's our presenter today, Bob Lane at Influence Ministries. So we're getting started. So here we go. All right. If you'll turn to the next page uh, after our discussion and. Uh, what we'd like to do is kind of look at uh, how we've gotten to where we're at. And what we're looking at, I'm going to use a 40-year period window. Uh, that goes back to kind of the middle 70s. Uh, I moved to uh, Fort Worth, Texas in 1976. So this is kind of a period I really relate to uh, working with a startup church in the North Richardson Hills area. And so I'm, tr I'm tracking with a period I think most of y'all can look at and going. 40 years of Christian cultural decline. And I'm going to name right here, going to kind of walk you through three major contributors. It's not, this is not exhaustive. It's not even totally comprehensive, but I believe these are three major contributors to the shift, to the ground shifting, to the cultural um, change that we're experiencing in America. Number one is Darwinism. Um, that goes back to the 40s, incidentally, and most of you have read, but um, schools have changed. And evolution is, and they will tell you this, it is science. <clears throat> it is the way it has been. And, and so science says it's this way. And so the creative act of God has been dismissed from our schools. And assuming that people that you're going to be interacting with really even understand creativism, creatives, uh, that uh, form that God did. One of the things I ran into when I was in college was I had a class and evolution was being taught even back then in the 60s. And uh, when I was, and this was a Christian college. But as I was talking, I uh, I don't want to sound like I was always trying to be a smart aleck, but <laughs> I remember the professor saying that. Uh, we had this one atom, and that because of its splitting and the big boom theory and all of these things, and you can go back. I'm not trying to teach all of this as much as present. And I would always, I sat there one day and almost, I like to flunk the class because I asked the question, where did the one atom come from? You always have to have an origin. And the one dismissive part of evolution is that they've never been able to find the missing link or the first atom. <laughs> and anybody, I, I mean, that is the question on there. But what happens is when you accept this mode, and it's been so, so taught in a certain way that what you end up with is that we're accidental. You're just a byproduct of evolution. It puts a total de-emphasis on the value of life. That we're just a higher form of animals. And, and recently, because we're doing this today, recently you've seen some, if you keep up with it, uh, of the underground or uh, the tapes that they've been doing on Planned Parenthood and really looking at the fact and ultrasound came along and now they can look and realize that that's a baby. That's human life. We're taking human life. 
going over here? And I was listening to somebody that was challenging, saying, well, not all the news media is really covering this. And then you have a lion being killed, and everybody's in an uproar about a lion. Well, I understand, and, you know, I like pets. I really do. But what happens is you see that culture is so changed, and one of the contributing factors was that if you're just accidental, then live life the way you want it. It's all about you, and live, drink, because life will be over, and because of that, uh, you know, then my life really doesn't have any purpose and significance other than me enjoying and satisfying the flesh. Right or wrong? Do you see that? That's what it is. This is a tremendous major starting place that began to happen. And it just has continued so that the thing that I think all of us should be disturbed and really understand is that most of our children grew up where this was the accepted norm. And if you accept that, I will not dispute. People will say, well, this is what science proved. I've lived long enough to tell you that science has changed so many times their views and their, they found out, well, this is what we said, but now we found out this. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his word has not changed. But you have to understand the culture has been impacted as a whole as you go down through here. Generational. What that simply means is that uh, prayer was taken out of schools. When prayer is it's more than a practice of a certain religion, prayer represents a dependence upon a higher being. It represents recognizing that we are here by design. Darwinism, no design. Just you just happen. It's just a biological molecule that comes out of a husband or a man and a woman uh, having sex together. And then you go on and you take prayer. They become steps. It's come around. And generationally, you go down to from the boomers to the Gen X to the millennials, and it is happening in the Gen Y, the next coming. And there is an emphasis. There is a reason. Watch this. There's so much importance placed upon getting children four years old, pre-K. Let's get them into school and all. Catholicism used to say, if you'll give us a child, up until the age 12, they'll be a Catholic forever. It's a true fact. If you impress upon the child, because in formative years, they're going to learn more than they ever will for the rest of their lifetime. In other words, more will come in. So I'm not against education. In fact, I'm much in favor of it. But it's where is that education coming from and where is the teacher's basis of truth? How are they going to present it? And where does it come from? Pop culture. Wow. Wow. There's a desensitizing that has transpired. Uh, you know, you can call me an old fogey, whatever you want to. But now you can almost see any act that you could never dream of. When I grew up, Lucy and what is Dizzy? He, I, I knew y'all know, you know, because I'm looking at some people that remember that. They slept in twin beds, man. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that's right or wrong or whatever, but now, believe me when I'm saying it, and some of you realize that on mainstream, not on just cable, not just on the internet, main, the main time at night, you can see or hear anything. And so children grow up with that being the normal practice of life. And so that de-emphasizes the family and all of the other things, and that becomes what culture looks for is their own self-indulgence and fulfillment. 
pop culture, the songs we sing, the games we play, all of that fits in. I, I don't know about you, but I get a little upset at the simple fact of the violence of our culture and they never seem to get back to, have you ever seen some of the violence of the games they play? And if you take that back to life just being, you know, not all that important, it's not God-given, it's just accidental, well then it's, you know, if I take life, then it's not that important. And then the consequences. I'm amazed. Aren't you? Really? The culture has shifted pop culture, and it continues to de-emphasize. You, if you see something long enough, it no longer startles you. It no longer. Yes, sir? They said shootings are up 85% in Houston. Oh, fi- murders are up 50% right here in the Houston, Texas area. Then you go down to, and I think this is so important, we keep talking about parents, parental influence, but the reality of it is that that's been taken away. It used to be that parents really had influence up until the junior high years. That's when it really shifted. That's when you had the rebellion of the teenager too. The junior high because they're trying their peers and all these things. Now it is down to four or five years old that at that age, the parents began to lose, and guess what? Television, their friends, school, begins to have more influence in their life than the parents do. Then when you take, um, I, some of you have heard my story, I come from a broken home in a dysfunctional family before it was ever called that. Because my mother and father, uh, went through a divorce in the late 1950s, which was unheard of. And I ended up in a small town where they didn't even know how to deal with the children of divorced people. And, and it, it was so unheard of. But now, not only the 50% of the marriages end in divorce, and incidentally, may I say something? That is a statistic that's not just true outside the church, it's true inside the church. So it says something about the influence. And it says that, wow, one of the goals that Gloria and I had was that we we chose to love each other. Sometimes, guess what? I don't know that we liked each other on certain days, and most of you can relate to that, but... We broke a cycle. The cycle came from my side. I did not want my children to have to experience what I did. And the devastation of broken homes cannot be overemphasized. Because you go, and many times it's visit the father or the mother every other weekend. I'm not pushing or lambasting anybody. And you're in two totally different environments. And usually with parents, you've got one that is stricter than the other one, one more disciplinarian than the other one. And i got news for you. Because children grow up, they're master psychologists. Even in the best of situations, they'll play moms against dads. Well, mom said I could do this. If you, if you were okay with it, they hadn't even talked to mom, but then they'll go to dad and say, or to her and say, well, dad said I can do this. If you're okay with it, they're masters because that's the way we were built and going from there. But you've got a generational, and as you go down, the generation has been exposed to totally different environments, different input, difference. Then you go to the third part. The third part is, and I'm not going to look at whether you're a Republican, Democrat, or Independent, or nothing. I'm not looking at the political part. I am looking at what I call the liberal judicial interpretations. Activism simply means that 
we're defining laws no longer by the standard that was the country and the Constitution was set up on. We're activating our beliefs to the culture that now exists. There's where the activism comes in. And so culture says that <coughs> marriage of same-sex partners is, uh, that's right, that's equal. And it defies even the picture of nature, of the way God created a husband, a man, and a, a, a female, and a husband, and a wife, and he joined them together, and that's the cornerstone of procreation. And if people don't know that, that he created everything after their own kind, then you, you lose. And so what happens is that culture dictates laws, and you can then go in, and if you have a judicial branch, which incidentally is not legislated, it's not the executive, but it's the one that interprets what's right and wrong, and they become the bastion of truth giving, and you've got this happening, you've got a major problem. Because the laws are not going to be persuaded by what it used to be. You've got a, 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 a shift. Ground is shifted. No longer do the Christian virtues have to go. Now you can break this down. You can go and, <laughs> and look and I can name, and you can name out of every one of those different things that have happened. Different aspects and different things are going. But now we're living into, uh, really, into an age that I don't, it's frightening. It's scary. The Christian culture no longer in America is the dominating view. It's not the life perspective. And churches... Christians, individual families that really have a relationship through Christ with the God that created them are going to have to address it. I go down and if you'll look on here, it says, what else? What role has the church played or not played in the decline? Is that a fair question? What role have we played or not played? The reason I pick that Jerry, I'm going to speak to you and me. It's because, you know what? That should have been the prime of my years, and I look at it, and I'll take responsibility. We didn't do the, a good job. And many of the people that are coming out of that environment have been inflicted, affected, indoctrinated, whatever phrase you want to use, by their environment, by their culture, instead of the things we absolutely said we believe. And we kept doing the things we were doing as far as the, the institutionalizing or the, almost the selling of church instead of the relationship with Christ. And really building people to know who they are. Really, who are you? Where are you at in life? Where do you want to go? What is fulfillment? And how do you experience fulfillment? If you do not define that, then people will always seek fulfillment through their own discussion of truth, through their own avenues. Give me some other thoughts. That uh, What are some other ways that the church has helped create or not done anything to stop this erosion or this movement? What do you think? Prayer out of school. There had to have been a whole lot more Christians in this one little small boy's. And I find that in America, we let them one little person dictate for all these people, even though we don't agree with it. We let they're offended, so let's change it. And I, I don't know if we stop back then. It's very true. Let her change. Did you know? Not only did they take authority on the concept of accountability. Prayer is more than just talking. But they also took consequences. Now, may I confess something to you? 
I'm one of those kids that got spanked in school. And it was swatted with a big old paddle. They don't do that anymore. And I, I get amused because uh, they say, you know, I'm one of these, and that's why I'm so whipped. <laughs> because I not only got it in school, I got it at home and all. When you take away consequences, you not only take away the consequences because of standard, but when you keep changing the standards, there is no real authority and accountability to the authority. So you lose respect for all of it. Does that make sense? So it's all a step. It's all a process. Great point, Angie. Somebody else. Uh, one thing my daughter and I were talking about the other day is I think we lost the ability to have conversations and have a Children don't feel guilt for anything that they do wrong anymore. I can remember when my children would misbehave, I'd say, you ought to be ashamed of that behavior. There's no shame with anything we do. Uh, I agree with you. Audrey, I agree on there. Because right, and wrong. right and wrong comes from, and again, you go all the way back, link it together. If I'm able to determine my own right and wrong, it goes back to the fact that because you say that's wrong doesn't mean I have to accept it as wrong. And it goes to a whole society. This is what we're living in today. And if we do not address it for not just our church life, for our own children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, if we don't get back to, because what I said was this, you remember in one of our sessions is the fact that when there is no conviction, there is no shame. When there's no conviction, there is no repentance. So I don't change what my behavior is. If there's no conviction. Without conviction, there cannot be any real conversion. Conversion meaning... I see a need that I can't change myself. We have gotten away from some of the fundamentals, and it has to start in the home. It has to start with some of our sources of truth, which is what we will be getting into in our next session. Yes? All of it ends up with being no authority. Yeah, or in a crisis, or a crisis likewise, and going from there and like that. Again, what we wanted to do was begin the discussion that we have today and then begin to look at some reality checks. What do we do from this? You cannot just stand up and discover this is the situation. You've got to deal with the situation. And how do we begin? And may I say something to you? Christianity is not driven by programs. The church is not the destination. The church is a body of believers banding together to present Christ to a lost world. And if that fundamental is not picked up, you see, I'm obligated to the body I'm a part of the body. It's, it's not taught. It's been more institutionalized that we come to a denomination, to a church, to a style, to a theology. And so everybody looks for the different program and they look at what they view as success. The success of Christianity is, in the old song, Amazing Grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. 
But if somebody is not the principal of being able to share how they found this, then they look to find that fulfillment in the ways and means of the world. Dean, are you ready? So we will, this session, and then we'll begin discussing as we go forward and uh, the live part. I can remember my daddy saying, I can't remember.